It's been the biggest story since yesterday. The, uh, the, com the committee put together by the president, it's an advisory panel, a presidential advisory panel uh, on land reform, issuing its report. Now, land expropriation without compensation need not and should not be applied in every case. This is what they are saying. This is one of the recommendations by the presidential expert advisory panel on land reform and agriculture. The panel released a report that would really inform government policy on land uh, on land reform uh, and uh, so what are the circumstances under which expropriation can actually be implemented well for more on that i'm joined now by the chair of the panel dr vuyo mathati it's good to have you once again thank you so much thanks for inviting me so recommendations and some immediate action uh, that uh, you are uh, proposing first and foremost is the uh, quick and the rapid release of the land already uh, in, 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 the in the state in the yes. hands of the state yeah absolutely Ours, I mean, we, we, we had to divide the recommendations into three sections. So the first part looks at immediate uh, action. And then the other part focuses on refocusing, you know, the, some of the policy positions and what we're proposing in terms of the refocus. And then the third part it deals with the white paper that we are uh, proposing a new white paper and national land reform framework. Yeah. So from a policy perspective. It was a group of you and many who are commenting on the report are saying, well, a majority of you were in support of expropriation without compensation. Were those the conversations that were going on amongst the panel? Absolutely. I mean, as you can imagine, you know, um, even at a societal level, there's been a big debate about this. You remember the hearings by parliament, there were people who were for and the people who were against. So we knew, I mean, as we went into that, that that's going to be the, t the tough one. But what was good with us was the fact that our terms of reference didn't ask us whether we agree or disagree. The terms of reference purely focused attention on us advising on the conditions in terms of its application. But before you deal with the conditions, you have to actually test and understand whether truly, you know, there is a case for expropriation, which is where we started, uh, without compensation. Now, your outcomes are based really on, on, on fact and, and deep study. Even uh, if you read the, the, the report itself, it goes a little bit in, into the history. Now, there are some who will say, but expropriation without compensation, uh, not ideal, in fact, illegal, because we bought uh, the piece of land. That's what Afri Forum uh, would, would want to, 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 to debate. That is not what your report is showing. Yeah, our report shows, because the critical issue here is whether there is a case for amendment of the Constitution or not. And basically, ours was to look into that. And we, the analysis took us to a point of appreciation that currently the Constitution, Section 25 particularly, is compensation-based. It refers to the just and equitable compensation. It does not actually, you know, stretching that to zero compensation or nil compensation could get you into dangerous zone in terms of contestation of that position. So in order to avoid that, we felt that it is important to amend and clarify, to create space with very clear wording that refers to that. So that was the first part. The second part was in terms of where would you apply this? And, you know, the kind of conditions uh, which we suggested um, in the report as far as that is concerned. And this is where now we, we talk about areas of, you know, abandoned land, unutilized, underutilized. We're talking about heavily indebted. We're talking about land used by labor tenants. We're talking about land used for speculation. So a whole range that basically creates space. And what we're saying about that, that you don't need to wait for the amendment of the Constitution to deal with that. Currently, government is busy with the expropriation bill. Right. And we are saying that within that, we can start testing that immediately. You're talking about area-based land reform. Explain that concept to me. What, is, what, what, what does it mean? The, the area-based, you know, it's a, not a new term, actually. And as a member of the National Planning Commission myself, in Chapter 6, we refer, you know, to that. So it, it was even the department before has, I mean, they've worked on, on the area-based methods. 
So what we're doing now is to align it very clearly in terms of how we can begin to deal with the problems, particularly from a redistribution perspective. Right. Because what happens with the approach that has been used of willing buyer, willing seller, is that you know, anybody can be willing from any part of the country. So you, you're finding that you know, the, 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 the move in terms of responding to the willing seller by government is actually, you know, create, you, you cannot have a strategic approach where you are focused on ensuring that in a given area you are moving people with a very focused uh, a, a, a program. For instance, in an area-based uh, approach, we go into an area, we analyze, you know, we, in terms from a planning perspective, analyze the agroecological potential of this area, and you can say, okay, here you can grow this, you can't grow this. So you begin to know which commodities are basically the best commodities for the area. And then you go further in terms of land use options that you have. And on the basis of that, you also look at the owners of land, be they private, be they government, be they, be, you know, it communal. And then you have a conversation with the owners of land, and you also, within that context, have a very focused beneficiary selection process. So, you know, if, if we move like that, we're not only assisting the redistribution in terms of people owning land, we're also aligning that land reform with the development and growth from an economical perspective of the country. So that kind of development is where now we're pushing the direction. All right, with me now, Dr. Vuya Mashati. She was chairing that presidential panel uh, into uh, the land reform. We're looking at the panel recommendations and, of course, what it, re it really all means uh, when it comes to the practical application. Of course, it's up to the president which part of this report he's going to uh, adopt or which part he's just going to put on his shelf uh, and do nothing with it. We'll continue with the conversation uh, when the news feed continues here on Newsroom Africa, Channel 405. Do stay with us.